Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Want access to geo-restricted games? Go to expressvpn.com slash inside. Yesterday marked the start of the highly anticipated legal battle between Epic Games and Apple, which will certainly be one for the annals of video game history, but the case could also have a huge impact on what any company is allowed to get away with when it comes to digital marketplaces in the future. Essentially, Epic Games is suing Apple, claiming that the company's policies surrounding the App Store on iOS devices like iPhones and iPads are anti-competitive and illegal, violating antitrust laws. The reasoning behind Epic's claim is that since smartphones in particular have become essential computing devices for millions of people, and iPhones make up nearly half of the smartphone market, Apple's walled garden approach to the App Store has actually created a single market monopoly. If a software developer wants to sell games or apps on iPhones, they have to sell them through the App Store and Apple takes a 30% cut from any initial purchase as well as any in-app purchases. This, of course, isn't ideal for Epic who would like to sell millions of mobile Fortnite players millions of dollars worth of V-Bucks without having to share that revenue with a third party. Apple also forbids any additional digital storefronts that sell iOS specific software and digital goods. This is why iPhone users can can't buy comics directly on the Comixology app, and it's also why streaming services like xCloud and Stadia hit a bit of a snag when trying to roll out on iOS devices. Now, if you're looking for the distinction between why you can buy games on Steam through an iPhone app but not comics, it's because you actually don't play the games you buy on Steam through the Steam app on your iPhone. As for how Microsoft was recently able to announce a public beta for xCloud on iOS, it's because the service isn't actually running via an app but through a web browser. So as you can see, Epic isn't the only company who has taken issue with or had to find workarounds for Apple's rigid App Store policies. In fact, over the next couple of weeks, representatives from Nvidia and Microsoft will even testify during the trial. The case is a bench trial, which means a judge will determine the outcome. US District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers is presiding and has said the trial may take up to 17 days. A lot of legal professionals and academics have shared their perspective, saying that Epic doesn't have that strong of a case, so it's likely they'll lose. Apple's counter argument is basically that the App Store can't be a single market because Android phones exist and have their own marketplaces providing competition. Apple will also also likely question the difference between the App Store and other similar walled garden ecosystems like Nintendo's online storefront, the PlayStation Store, and the Microsoft Store on Xbox. They also claim that the App Store terms of service and security features are designed to help protect consumers and developers. Apple's other major counter is that if it were forced to let companies like Microsoft or Epic put competing digital storefronts on iOS devices, it would violate Apple's right to refuse to deal, which is just a fancy way to say who they choose to partner and do business with. However, refuse to deal is a bit of a gray area and it can clash with other anti trust laws in some cases. Now, while the outcome of the trial could have enormous ramifications down the road, what's particularly interesting about it right now is the level of transparency around sales numbers and digital business practices that the case is producing on a grand scale. Information that was previously confidential or closely guarded is now being used as evidence to support arguments in the trial, which is largely public. Companies are being outed that aren't even involved with the suit directly. For example, it was just revealed that Sony charges publishers and larger game developers a cross-play fee and is the only platform holder to do so. The trial is barely 24 hours old at this point and it's already provided a multitude of stories from a humorous Zoom mishap that let people listening in from home just shout whatever they wanted, to how much money Epic actually paid for all those Epic Game Store exclusives and free games. They spent $11.6 million on free games which netted them about 5 million users by the way. And as for exclusives, they spent $444 million in which $146 million went towards a Borderlands 3 timed exclusive. Reports are saying Epic will take a $300 million hit as a result of its investments into exclusives, but you know, that's okay because even though the Epic Game Store has operated at a loss since its inception, Fortnite still makes well over a billion dollars every year. And of course, they could easily increase that revenue by millions simply by selling V-Bucks directly to Fortnite players on iPhones and iPads. In any case, Epic Games v Apple is surely going to be a video game court case for the ages filled with more interesting numbers and insights over the next couple weeks, so we'll stay tuned. But in the meantime, let us know in the comments how you think things are going to shake out. Should Apple be forced to let competing stores onto their platforms or should Epic be content with the way they are making their billions already? Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.